Welcome to another video, you've got Mr. Everything English and before we begin this video, let's just make a few discussions. Everything Education, tuition for maths, English and science. Number one, it is not plagiarism to use an idea for a story from somebody else. Kids have done this for years and have been using Harry Potter, Maze Runner, Lord of the Rings, Fast and Furious. They've been using ideas for years and years. So there is nothing wrong with using somebody else's idea for a story. Number two, and this is the most frustrating one. Please, teachers, I'm talking to you. Please stop scaring students and giving them fake news and saying that it's plagiarism if they use somebody else's idea. Plagiarism, guys, as defined by the exam boards, is copying 50% of somebody's written work. There is no written work for you to copy. It's simply an idea. Number three, guys, this method, I've used it for 10 years. My mentor who told me this method used it for 30 years before me. And there's loads of teachers up and down the country who use this method. And number four, by using this method of pre-planning question five, you have absolutely nothing to lose. Because if your pre-planned story fits the question on the day, fantastic, use it. And if it doesn't fit, then do what you would have done anyway and make up a story on the spot. So I hope I've cleared that up. Please guys, I'm begging you. Again, I'm talking to the teachers. Please, please, please stop, stop scaring the students by telling them that they will fail their GCSEs if they use somebody else's idea. It's a bunch of poop and it needs to stop. Now, let's begin. Guys, paper one, question five. Please pre-plan this question. And in this video, I'm going to give you eight different pre-planned question fives that you can use for your exam. But before we do that, let's go over the mark scheme. For this question, guys, you are marked on the quality of your language, not on your creative writing. And that is why AQA, for example, is giving grade nine to students who write about a girl, not texting them back because they're not marking creativity, they're not marking the plot, they're not marking how lovely the character is. We're not in year seven, we're in year 11. We are sitting a GCSE exam. And behind me is the criteria. Your work has to be interesting and it must answer the question. We must do the following. We must have lots of big words, ambitious vocabulary. We must have good quality language devices. We must have structured devices. These two are called in common sense. You can read them in your own time. Then we must have a wide range of punctuation. We must be accurate in our spelling. And that is what we are marked upon to use standard English in your writing. Now, this is what you're marked upon, which means what? It means that you should focus on the quality of your language, the quality of your writing. How good is your story when it comes to its vocabulary, when it comes to its language, when it comes to its structure, when it comes to its punctuation. We are not looking at who has written the most creative story with 10,000 characters, five different settings and an airplane crashing and an orphanage and superpowers. That's not gonna get you a grade nine. Simple plot, excellent language, and you're on your way. So that being said, guys, I'm gonna now give you eight different plots that you can use for every single question in your GCSE exam. Plot number one is where this journey began and this is the first priest story. In paragraph one, you are a priest and you wake up in the afterlife and you climb out of your grave, you dust your suit down and you look for the sign that's pointing to heaven because you believe heaven is where you belong. So you begin your journey to heaven. Paragraph two, I describe that journey to heaven, step by step, step by step, step by step. And I only focus on two things. I describe the weather, I describe the weather and the animals, two things, but they are amazing. 
everything is perfect. Paragraph number three, you arrive at the gates of heaven, but everything is locked. You're pulling the bars, you're knocking on the doors, no one's there. So you scan your finger on the little machine and it says access denied. And you are told that God has not allowed you entry to heaven because you have been sent to hell. Paragraph four, I now describe the journey to hell. And this paragraph juxtaposes paragraph number two, where here I describe the weather and the animals, but this time it's terrible, it's disgusting. The animals are hurting, the weather is painful, everything is nasty. And paragraph number five, trembling, I arrive <coughs> at the gates of heaven. My hands are shaking, I'm sweating, I don't want to go inside. How does it end? It's up to you. Do you enter and do you get burnt? Do the angels come and save you as this was God's last test? It's entirely up to you how you end your story. Now, somebody might say, sir, how will you make this story fit? Other question fives. Well, let's test the theme. So guys, these are the question fives since June 2022 to June 2017. Let's say, for example, the question was, write a story about a magical world. The afterlife is purely magical. Angels and beautiful animals. Everything is over the top. Everything is amazing. Um, <coughs> write a story about an event that cannot be explained. I cannot understand. I cannot explain why God has sent me to hell. I write a story about a life-saving rescue. At the end, rather than sending me to hell, the angels come and save me. Let's try some of these. Um, write a story about two people from different backgrounds. I'll bring in a character and when the priest is walking to hell, the devil joins him on this journey. The priest, the devil. Two people from different backgrounds. Do you see small tweaks and make your story fit. Now let's go for plot. Now let's go for plot number two, guys. And this is priest part two. In paragraph one, it's been 1,000 years and you've been waiting in the queue for heaven. The whole population is slowly entering. And at the end of the paragraph, your name is called up and you are allowed to enter heaven. Paragraph number two, you describe heaven. And you're a little bit let down. You're a bit sad. After all these years, <clears throat> after worshipping God, being the best priest possible, heaven is not all that. It's not as amazing as you thought it would be. Paragraph three, you learn that heaven has three levels and you've been put in the bottom set. You've been put in the bottom level. And you're angry. You're frustrated. All your life, you spent worshipping God and he's put you in the bottom set. Paragraph number four, you decide, you plan a mission that you're going to sneak in, you're going to break in to level one. And it's a very, very small mission. Maybe you're going to sneak past a few guards, slide in through the door, but you're going to break into level one. Paragraph five, you've gotten past all the angels, you're nearly there, you're just about to enter the first level and you feel a hand on your shoulder. You've been caught by the angels. How does it end? It's entirely up to you. Let's apply it to a few questions. Um, write a story about time travel. When you enter heaven, so before you entered heaven, maybe you were 60 years old. When you enter heaven, you've gone down in age to the age of 30. Because in heaven, you're at your prime age. Just an example. Um, any others guys? An event that cannot be explained. Why did God put me in the bottom set? Why did God put me in the bottom level of heaven? Um, life saving rescue. That's a good one. Maybe at the end, when the angels catch you, they're going to banish you to hell. But God intervenes and says he'll give you one more chance. But again guys, just small tweaks to make your story fit. All right, guys, now let's move on to priest number three. And this is my favorite priest story. This is my favorite priest story. In this one, guys, in paragraph one, the priest is sent to hell and you're punished for a thousand years. 
and we describe the punishment. Your eyes are peeled to wipe away the sin that they saw. Your tongue is burned to, to cleanse it of all the bad things you said. But you are punished for a thousand years and you become inmate number 666. Your name was Father Michael, now you were inmate 666 because you were a hypocritical priest. Paragraph number two. We describe how the priest, he settles into heaven. On day one, he's really nervous, he's really scared. He sees all the people there, the murderers and the politicians. He sees all the bad people gathered up in hellfire. But the priest, he rises through the racks. He takes off his collar. He puts away the Bible. He smokes a cigar. He embraces hellfire. He becomes a top dog in hell. Paragraph number three. Just as life is going good, just as you're settling into hell, you're summoned by the angels and they sit you down and they tell you that 1,000 years ago, a fatal mistake was made. You were not supposed to go to hell. A mistake was made and that you really have to go to heaven. Paragraph four, you're sad, you're upset. You don't want to go to heaven, but you have to. You pick up the Bible, you wipe up all the dust, and you put it in your pocket, you put your collar back on, you go back to the priest you were when you entered hellfire, but you don't wanna go. Paragraph number five, you're walking out of hell and you're dragging your heels and all the murderers, all the killers, all the politicians are clapping for you because you're their hero. How does it end? It's entirely up to you. Does the priest leave? Does he stay? How are we gonna do this? Let's apply to two questions guys. A story about a new beginning you had a new beginning when you settled into life in hellfire. I write a story about being abandoned. Ironically, when God sends you to heaven, you feel abandoned by God all over again. All right, guys, that's the end of the pre stories. Now we move on to keyboard warrior. In this story, guys, in paragraph one, you are a 15 year old boy and you are an amazing gamer. And in paragraph one, you're playing Call of Duty and your gamer name is Demon Slayer 512 and you are the best sniper at Call of Duty. That's paragraph one. Paragraph two, while you're playing, the screen goes blank for a second, then a message pops up and it says that Russia is going to war with Ukraine and anybody above the age of 14 must sign up. So you thinking that you're an amazing sniper, you think, you know what, I'm gonna go and join the army. So you log onto your computer, you give your details and you sign up. Now two weeks pass and you arrive at the army base. You arrive at the barracks and training begins. They put you through fitness tests. They make you shoot the sniper and you have a really harsh and a really dark reality check. You realize that you can't shoot a sniper gun. That life online is different to life in person. Paragraph four, the battle begins and all the soldiers run that way and you go run that way and you hide behind a tree. You're scared, you're shaking, but you have a flashback to the days that you were Demon Slayer 512. So at the end of paragraph four, you get up one more time. You take out your sniper and you get ready to fight. Paragraph five, your hands are trembling, but you're going to try to find the enemy and you look on the battlefield and you think you found the Russian army general. You take aim and you're about to shoot. How does it end? It's entirely up to you. Does he miss and kill the wrong person? Does he kill the Russian army general and win the war for everyone? How does it end? It's entirely up to you. All right guys, write a story about time travel. The war is a very futuristic war. There's robotic soldiers and all that fancy stuff. Uh, write a story when things turn out unexpectedly. Never in a million years do you think that you were going to kill the Russian army general. Um, paragraph, this one, write a story about a life-saving rescue. You saved your entire army with that one kill. But guys, do you see small tweaks, <clears throat> small tweaks make it fit. Make small changes and make your story fit. All right, guys, number four. And this time we have the big mistake. 
in this story guys in paragraph one you are an angel you're a young innocent harmless angel that wouldn't hurt a fly and you're there getting ready for your first day at work you're doing your makeup you're putting your dress on everything is perfect but ironically contrastingly juxtaposingly you are it is your first day at work because of a promotion and you are the angel of death that is your new job paragraph two you meet god for the first time and god gives you your first assignment the first soul you must take and your job is you must travel to earth and take the soul of your first victim paragraph three i describe the journey from heaven to earth and i see it as an elevator that is going down and as it goes lower and lower it gets darker and it gets more disgusting because from heaven to earth i want to show the contrast paragraph four you arrive at earth you find your victim you take the soul and you put it into a tube that you carry in your pocket paragraph five you go back to heaven and you're supposed to put your soul into a machine to decide does this soul go to heaven or hell but when you put the soul into the machine your heart stops beating because you get an error message you have taken the soul of the wrong person you have killed the wrong person and what is your punishment your punishment is that you are banished from heaven forever and you are sent to earth and turned into a human being now how do you make this story fit um write a story about a magical world heaven is magical earth is rubbish the contrast write a story about a new beginning it's your first day at the job that could be your new beginning um uh, write a story about time travel when you travel from heaven to earth and as you're going down you almost um you almost go back in time because earth is behind time in comparison to heaven because god created heaven before he created earth um when things turn out unexpectedly you never in a million years would have thought that you kill the wrong person now guys netflix and chill is famous i present to you netflix and kill in this story guys paragraph number 1 you are a teenager and you are home alone for the first time mom and dad have gone out you are home alone lovely you're watching netflix having some food enjoying your time alone knock knock you hear a noise in your house what's that you take off the headphones and you go to the door end of paragraph 1 in paragraph 2 you slightly open your bedroom door and you can see shadows you can see silhouettes in your living room and you absolutely poop yourself you close the door and run back to your bedroom paragraph number 3 you call your mom you call your dad you call your friends you call everybody nobody is picking up the phone nobody is answering so you make the decision that on this day you must protect your house so paragraph 4 you get ready to fight you get ready for war you get the makeup out and you put on the war paint take out the blow dryer as your gun you get ready to fight and in paragraph 4 you open the door ready to attack the enemy what happens next is entirely up to you so for example if the question says write a story about 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 an event that cannot be explained maybe your parents are there and this is a surprise happy birthday we got a surprise party for you I don't know why I'm doing that voice but yeah <coughs> uh write a story about a magical world maybe you end it by when you open your door you step into a different world something has changed uh paragraph this one here guys write a story when how about this one about two people from different backgrounds maybe you open the door and maybe a homeless person has stumbled into your house and they're not looking for trouble and you maybe speak to them give them some food but a small tweak a small tweak guys is all you need all right guys next story let's move on to the amazon package all right guys in this story in paragraph number 1 you are writing in the voice of an amazon package and it's been 5 years and you've been sat in the warehouse gathering dust 
nobody has purchased you nobody has ordered you and you're sitting there sad and lonely by yourself paragraph two alarms are ringing lights are flashing somebody has ordered you what are you you can decide but somebody has ordered you and your mood has changed completely paragraph three they pick you off the shelf they clean you up you're being pampered they put nice bubble wrap around you. They put you in a brand new Amazon Prime box. You feel a million bucks. Paragraph four, you're put on a trolley and I describe the journey from the warehouse to the Amazon Prime van. You haven't seen the sky for five years. You haven't felt the air for five years. It's amazing. Paragraph five, you're in the van. You can't wait to go to your new house. How does it end? Up to you. And this one, the van is stopped because the customer cancels the order. Write a story feeling abandoned, for example, when the customer cancels the order. Write a story about a magical world, going from the warehouse to the outside world, to the van. It's been a magical journey. You were sick and tired of the warehouse, but now life is amazing. All right, guys. Then we have one more, guys, and this is called Prison Brick. In this story guys, paragraph one, it starts with you driving your car and you're booting it down the road because you're getting late for your wedding. You are running late and you're booting it, driving super fast. But unfortunately, you get pulled over by the police and you get arrested because of your high, high speeds. Paragraph number two, you are taken to the police station and you must spend one night in jail. And in this paragraph, I describe your feelings, your angry you're frustrated, you're gonna miss your wedding, your wife's gonna kill you, you spent all this money, you're wearing a tuxedo, you got a lovely car, and everything is ruined. Paragraph number three, you're sitting there in your cell, and you describe two things. Describe the disgusting smell in the cell, and describe the walls around you. They're cracked, they're damaged, there's graffiti all over them. In paragraph number four, you've had enough. And in anger, you kick the prison door, not expecting it to be open, but it opens by chance. The guard didn't lock the door. At the end of paragraph four, you're standing there thinking, shall I escape or shall I stay? You decide, let's just do it. You decide to escape. Paragraph number four, sorry, number five, you describe your journey out of the prison. You're nearly out, <coughs> but the alarms go off. The sirens go off and an announcement is made that a prisoner has escaped. How does it end? Up to you. Do you escape? Do you get caught? What happens? You can tweak that. Um, write a story. Write a story about two people from different backgrounds. When you're in your cell, maybe have an inmate and you're sitting there in a suit, tuxedo, looking pucker and your inmate is an absolute criminal who stinks like crazy. Uh, write a story about write a story about time travel. You had a nice, lovely, modern car. Everything was perfect. And when you go to your cell, when you go to the prison, it's like you've gone back in time. It stinks of poop. Everything is old fashioned. You can't believe this has happened to you. Write a story about an event that cannot be explained. You don't understand how you got here. You don't understand what happened. These are all the question five that have ever come up. This is my advice to you. In this video, I've given you eight different stories. You can definitely tweak them and make them fit every single question five. If you don't wanna learn one, learn two, learn three. But what you wanna do guys is this, write up the stories, get them marked, get some feedback, and then keep rewriting them until you get them to a certain grade, then learn it off by heart and go and use it in your exam. It's a lovely way of securing 50% of your GCSE before the exam even starts. And these are eight. If you want, learn all eight or make up your own. But what you wanna do guys is keep your plot simple like the way my ones are one character, normally one setting, and one simple idea, because by keeping your plot simple, you allow yourself to focus on the important stuff, the language, the vocab, the structure, and the punctuation. All right, guys.
I hope you found this video beneficial. What I'm going to do guys is this, this document that has all of the stories. I'm going to put the link in the bio where you can download it for free. So you have everything in front of you and then you can thank me later. As always guys, it's been Mr. Everything English. Everything Education. Tuition for Maths, English and Science.